Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, except for today, sort of, because we are celebrating a mighty 50,000 recruits into the Grand Fleet with a nice long Q&A session. I'd like to thank everyone who submitted questions, even if many of them were questions that were covered in the first Q&A special, and as a result will not be read here today. Even so, I received an enormous amount of questions, many, many more than I thought I would, so I have had to curate them a bit, and so I apologize if your question isn't here today, but there will always be future opportunities. But for now, let's Let's begin this Q&A with the ever-classic, what's the weirdest place you lost your penis? And look, I don't know, I guess it all depends on how weird you think an amusement park is, jeez. Get off my back. Do you think Zeus can survive if Big Mom dies? I highly doubt it. When a Devil Fruit user dies, I imagine their abilities would dissipate as well. Especially since certain Paramecia fruits, like sugars for example, have their powers reverted when they fall into a certain level of unconsciousness. How many peanuts can you fit in your mouth? Hmm, I'm gonna say... 37. Would a Binturong mink exist? All right, I had to look this up, but I'm so glad I did because a Binturong is an amazing sort of bear cat. And seeing as how Oda goes to great lengths to find weird and unique creatures to showcase in the series, I think one could definitely exist. Whether or not we'll ever see it is another matter. If you could switch genders, would you? Uh, depends. If it was a permanent switch, I'd say no because I'm quite happy with my gender identity. But if it was an even cough like power where I could switch my gender back and forth, then yeah, why not? Do you hate my puns? <laughs> No, Mr. Irish, they're delightful, although I'm very disappointed that you did not try to work a pun into the question. Are you going to see One Piece Stampede? Damn straight I am. Multiple times if possible. Because Film Gold had a theatrical run in Australia, I'm really hoping that Stampede will as well, but sadly there's no guarantee at this point. Egg? Why do you refuse doing videos based on One Piece filler? Do you hate it that much? Nah, look, I don't do videos on filler stuff because there is so much in the world of One Piece canon that needs to be covered before I even consider stepping into the extended realm. For example, there are something like 130 canon devil fruits, so I can't be wasting time in the devil fruit encyclopedia examining filler fruits when I only go at a pace of doing one a week. It's just too much of a disservice to everything that's well, relevant. Are you a potato? Yes, I am a sweet potato to be precise. Cake or pie? Definitely cake, uh, in most cases anyway. It actually depends on the type of cake and the type of pie. For example, if you gave me a fruit cake and a meat pie, I'd probably pick the pie. But in most scenarios, cake. Am I too late? No. No, you are not. You playing Jump Force? No, I'm not playing Jump Force. It just doesn't look all that fun. The combat seems kind of meh, and the character models are just weird as hell. Really, all I want is another Jump Superstars or Jump Ultimate Stars. Why is that so difficult? How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? Am I the only one who don't like Food Wars? Yeah, quite possibly. I personally love the Food Wars, especially the anime adaptation. It's a series that's nice to leap into every now and then because it has all of the tension and excitement of a battle manga, but with cooking, so yay. Favorite CP9 character? When I was reading any sloppy, it was definitely Kaku, but in recent years, I've really come to appreciate the madness that is Kumadori. Have you spoiled anything indirectly in on of your videos without putting a spoiler alert? Yes, I have, unfortunately. I'm not going to go through it here in case I end up spoiling it again, but there was a certain chapter of the reverie where a certain character showed up and I put him in the thumbnail of my video review, which to be fair is what every other One Piece YouTuber does, but it's also a dick move when they do it as well. And sometime after that, I developed a spoiler alert thumbnail to avoid situations like this. And sadly, the videos do receive less views as a result, but I'm happy no longer spoiling the manga for those who don't read it as rapidly as I do. What's your favorite type of milk? Chocolate milk, faux show. Sure. Will my mother ever love me? Well, not knowing anything about you or your mother, I'd have to say, no? Who's your favorite warlord? It's probably Doflamingo, although Mihawk would be a close second. If you were a mink, which animal would you be? Ooh. Whatever giant cat beast Nekomamushi is, I'll take that one. Why do you think One Piece isn't as popular in the West as it is other parts of the world? All right, big question there, but One Piece had a very rocky start in the West due to the Four Kids adaptation, and I don't think it ever really recovered. It's also just really hard to get into because the length of the series is highly prohibitive, and at first glance, the art looks really weird compared to your typical schmick and cool shonen style. But really, its biggest problem is that the West doesn't have a magazine like Weekly Shonen Jump, which was the platform for One Piece to become a cultural icon in Japan. There's nothing like that to really push One Piece in the West, so yeah, it's a shame it doesn't get the recognition it deserves, but that's kind of that. Is there any possibilities that Marco will join Straw Hats? 
I certainly hope not. He's a natural ally, but not a crew member. What is your opinion on Law? I like Law. I don't love Law though. He has an incredibly cool design, an amazing devil fruit, but he's just a bit too serious for my liking, which I know is ironic given that my favorite character is Zoro, but Zoro has a nice sense of humor to him, whereas Law's humor comes from other people being idiots around him. Never complaining when Law's involved though, he is a cool character. You like Bartolomeo or nah? Yeah, I like Bartolomeo just fine. I'm not the biggest fan of his aesthetic, but he does bring a lot of fanboy fun to the series. Have you seen Ruby and what are your thoughts? I have not seen Ruby and as a result, I have zero thoughts. Would poop be considered Logia or special Paramecia? You know what? I'd say a special Logia actually, special in that nobody wants it. Would you agree that the Gadatsu cover story confirms that the Pluton is not in Alabaster? No, I don't agree with that at all. While it's not confirmed that Pluton is on Alabaster, Cobra stated that if Crocodile had the information on the Poneglyph, then the kingdom would have fallen into his hands implying that it might be on the desert nation. Possibly not though. In any case, all Gadatsu's cover story really proves is that everyone loves hot springs. What are you going to do when One Piece ends? I don't know, probably wallow in despair for the remainder of my life. What's your do you like Dragon Ball? Yes, I love Dragon Ball. After Pokemon, that was my real hook into the world of anime as a child. And to this day, I will watch any new Dragon Ball thing, even Super. And in fact, the Broly movie was pretty fantastic. What's the atomic weight of hydrogen? It's, uh, this. What island in the series has your favorite color palettes? Definitely Fishman Island. As much as it may not have been the best arc in terms of story or characters, it had one hell of a vibrant and beautiful location. Could I ask you a question? Yes, yes you may. I know you're into Hunter Hunter, so I've been willing to ask, what are your top three arcs? I am indeed heavily into Hunter Hunter, so my top three arcs say, uh, in no particular order, Heaven's Arena, York New City, and the Chimera Ant arc. Who has the better bongos? Nami or Robin. Definitely Nami, but primarily because she went to the trouble of purchasing a higher quality product used by a professional percussionist, while Robin went with the more budget option. What are your and your wife's favorite Pokemon? I'm a big fan of Gengar personally, and my wife likes Mew and Dragonite. Do you think the way Luffy is portrayed in the anime is what Oda was aiming for in the manga? Very much so, yes. What you see in the anime with Luffy is almost 100% true to manga Luffy. The only exception is some weird filler scenes where Luffy just doesn't quite have his completely natural persona. Do you like the anime Seven Deadly Sins and would you consider it worth reviewing if you needed more to review? My wife and I watched the first season of Seven Deadly Sins and I quite enjoyed it. I even tried reading the manga from then on and I don't remember exactly what happens, but I feel like things got really weird very quickly and I just kind of lost interest. Which fight was better? Luffy versus Luchi or Luffy versus Katakuri? Tough call. I'd say Luffy vs. Katakuri because it has quite a unique spin, along with the amazing choreography and a really gripping antagonist. Luffy vs. Luchi is a glorious slugfest, but it's hard to say that I was ever invested in Luchi as a character. Not anywhere near as much as Katakuri anyway. Would you drink the bath water used by Nami? Uh, depends how dehydrated I am at the time, as well as, you know, what kind of soap Nami uses. What's your favorite manga outside of One Piece? Ooh, there's a lot of them, but it's hard to pass up Rurouni Kenshin. The art is just too damn spectacular. If Brooke put on Seastone handcuffs, would he die? Great question there. He probably wouldn't die, but maybe his soul would be evicted from his body and be unable to return while the cuffs are on. Who's your favorite subscriber? Oh man, that's like asking someone to choose a favorite child. I mean, there's an obvious answer, but you can't ever publicly state it. Do you think Luffy has another gear form to deal with Kaido? Not currently, no, or at least I hope not because it becomes quite problematic. Questions arise like, oh, well, why didn't he just use that against Katakuri, Cracker, or Doflamingo? So if there is a new gear, I think it will be innovated on Wano. Are you running out of ideas? Nah. What's your favorite weird comment? Can Wapul eat ass? Hey man, you have a wonderful day and good luck with the questions. So Oda has hinted at this many times, but do you think the last panel of One Piece will be Luffy's execution slash grave? I do think that would be a nice bookend to close the series with Luffy's death mirroring Rogers, but that sort of seems a bit somber for One Piece. I picture it ending with more hopeful shots of the next generation of pirates or whatever, being inspired by Luffy's legacy and embarking on their own adventure. If you wanted an antagonist from an arc to join the Straw Hats, who would it be? Let's go with Buggy. That way he could be on the crew of two pirate kings. What is your truthful opinion on teching? <laughs> All right, this question has probably been a long time coming. First up, huge respect for the guy. He's built an incredible empire through pure passion and consistency. With that said, he serves as one of, not the only, but one of the inspirations for me starting the Grand Line Review because the content those YouTubers made wasn't what I wanted. That isn't to say it's bad or throw any shade whatsoever. It's just not what I was personally looking for. So I said, screw it, I'll do it myself. And uh, here we are. 
Do you watch any other animes? I do, but not as many as I'd like to. At the moment, the only things I watch with any real consistency are Food Wars and My Hero Academia. How do you feel about Perona joining the Straw Hats? Highly dubious. What made you dislike the anime as much as you do? I would say the fact that the anime is made without any form of creative integrity. The One Piece anime is a giant cash cow to Toei, Shueisha, and Fuji TV, and unlike the manga in which one person and an editor have entire creative control, the anime is dictated by a corporate mandate of maximizing profit, which results in otherwise talented writers, directors, and animators being forced to pump out 48 episodes a year on extreme deadlines, and that are plagued with ever-expanding methods of filling time, because if they actually adapted the anime with decent pacing, then they catch up to the manga in no time. It's just a a really messy situation and the only way out of it is to make One Piece seasonal, like you know every other weekly Shonen Jump anime adaptation these days, but that's not going to happen because money. Which One Piece character would you most want to eat? As a Biscuit fan, I wouldn't mind tasting Cracker's Devil Fruit offerings. If you have a child, boy girl, what One Piece character would you name them after? <laughs> Firstly, I doubt my wife would ever let that happen, but for a boy, we'll go with Luffy, because why not give your child the best possible start in life? And for a girl, I don't know, Perona? Or maybe Viola, but that's born because I like the name, not so much the character. Or actually, I'll just name the girl Charlotte, because that could be like 86 different characters. Oh, and if I had a cat, then I'd name him Charlotte Cat Akuri. What is your opinion on the new wave of shonen, i.e. My Hero Academia, Black Clover, The Promised Neverland, Dr. Stone, etc. Sadly, the only one of those series I'm familiar with is My Hero Academia, and I think that's going pretty nicely. It definitely has the potential to live up to its predecessors, and I hope that the rest of the new wave do as well, because it feels like there's a huge gap to be filled. How do you choose the opening quote for each of your One Piece 101 character videos? Usually I have a quote very clearly in mind. Like for example, if I think about Zoro, then the quote I used about him becoming extraordinary just immediately pops into mind. For less familiar characters like say Senor Pink or Noland, I actually have to skim through the manga volumes and just pay special attention to their dialogue. Sometimes I even need to take two short quotes and turn it into a proper intro. More Q&A. Let's see, what are your thoughts on Wano so far? Is it going in the direction you expected when Wano hype was at its peak? Without going into any spoilers, Wano is going great. It's definitely not gone how I or I think anyone else suspected it would be, but that's the beautiful unpredictability of One Piece, really. So yeah, very much enjoying it so far. On a scale of one to 10, what's your favorite color of the alphabet? And that would definitely be penguins. My question is, can you say shrimp on the Barbie like in the Paul Hogan commercials? Can I? Yes. Will I? No. I would ask a question, but I don't think he would see this. Oh, oh, that's a shame. Next question, I guess. Do you think Toei's version of the Reverie arc will be 90 episodes long, 5% of which are the main events, 20% of which consisting of scenery establishing shots, 25% of flashbacks, and 50% of elongated reaction shots of nearby characters? <laughs> yeah, in all seriousness, I think that the Reverie has huge potential to be extended far beyond what it should be. My biggest fear is that with all the returning characters, we're going to be subject to long flashbacks about their involvement in the story, because, and this isn't really a spoiler, but for the Reverie, Otis started putting in little history panels to remind us of certain characters, and that's what I fear is going to be exploited in the anime. Who would win in a battle of Okamas? Eva or Bonkle? Not based on their strength, but rather on their presentation and aura as Okamas. That's a tough one actually, because they are both very much the definition of Okama, but in the end I'd have to say Bonkle, just because he's been willing to sacrifice himself for the cause. Who do you think is the straw hat Oda focuses on the least? The one that in comparison doesn't have as much character development. Probably Zoro. The dude has like a five page flashback and the only development he really gets is through battle. Although in the post New World era, I'd say Nami or Robin because neither one of them has even had an individual fight and they generally get pushed into the background. Will your profile picture ever be One Piece related? Don't get me wrong, I don't hate your face. I'm just curious. Ah, oh, I'm glad you don't hate my face. But yeah, I will more than likely change it to the Grand Line Review logo at some point though. Would you recommend One Piece to a 12 year old? Also, I'm a 12 year old and I watch your videos, yeah? And like your videos and keep up the good work. 100% yes, I'd recommend One Piece to anyone really. It's a surprisingly universal series and I think there are some great role models in there for younger human beings. What's your opinion on Devil Fruits as a power system compared to other shonen power systems like Quirks or Stans? I think Devil Fruits were a revolutionary power system in the context of the early life of One Piece. They allow for an infinite variety of possibilities to be used and it's not all about say who has the most Chakra, Ryatsu, Ki, whatever. One person has one devil fruit and nobody else can access that particular power. It's so simple. But a system like that has allowed the series to grow into the beast it is today. And I think that modern series like My Hero Academia are really modeling their systems in reaction to that because they see the chance for variety and longevity. 
What do you think Vivi's position on the crew would have been? Fairly predictable answer, but some sort of diplomat. Like for example, if they arrived on say Fishman Island, then Vivi's first point of call would have been to visit the Ryuku Palace and greet the royalty of the island on behalf of the Straw Hats. What are your three biggest gripes with One Piece? All right, so an obvious answer is the anime in general, so I won't include that because that's boring. Other than that, my three biggest gripes are the fact that Nami and Robin haven't gotten an actual fight since any Slobby and Skypea respectively, Sabo's really clunky reintroduction into the modern timeline, and the fact that Pell survived the explosion on Alabaster with no explanation whatsoever. I mean, seriously, if Oda had just killed him right then and there, he'd be one of the most legendary characters in the series. Which Straw Hat has the saddest backstory in you opinion? Either Chopper or Brook, I'd say. Chopper because it's extra painful seeing things happen to someone that young, and Brook because he had to put up with 50 years of complete isolation after seeing his entire crew die. Are there any other fictional works, universes you care a lot about? More specifically, what are your thoughts on Harry Potter? Books, not movies. I love the Harry Potter books. I grew up with them through primary and high school. I'm not a mega fan of the universe, but I was definitely one of those kids who was reading them within the first week of their release. And yeah, the movies didn't really live up to them. But fun fact, my wife was an extra in two of the Harry Potter movies. What do you think about One Piece? If you have heard about it. I think One Piece is a godsend and the best possible way to experience the series in animated form post time skip. I mean, the thought of condensing Dressrosa to 48 episodes practically makes me climax and it serves as irrefutable proof that the anime is being artificially extended for profit motives. So absolutely look into One Piece. Not One Piece related, but have you seen or heard of the anime Kill la Kill? It's rather popular, so it wouldn't surprise me if you had at least heard about it. And I have at least heard about it. In fact, Kill la Kill is one of my all time favorite anime series and I rewatch it at least once a year along with Gurren Lagann. Why after all this time, haven't you made a video on the top five God Usopp moments where he used more than 1% of his power? And look, the answer to this is obvious because there hasn't even been an occasion in the series where God Usopp has used more than 1% of his power yet. Do you cosplay? If so, what have you cosplayed so far? And do you have one you're working on right now? Short answer, no. Long answer, I did back in high school and early university when I was a regular on the Australian convention scene. I did a fair few things, but the only one I'm willing to own up to is Alex from Silent Hill Homecoming. And that's mostly because we had one hell of a great photographer that makes what I did look decent. Any updates on expanding into other anime slash manga content? In reference to your video you posted in December, looking for people. Yes, yeah, not a great update, but the new world review is very much still in the works. I'm not gonna lie, it's a much more time intensive endeavor than I thought it was going to be, but I am still committed to bringing it to life. I just can't afford to neglect this channel or my day job to do so. Big question time, Grand Line Review. Do you vape? Nope. What One Piece villain would you like to see make a return? I want Gein to come back. He and Don Kree just vanished. I mean, Kree can stay vanished, but Gein was so damn cool. Which One Piece character reminds you most of your wife? Probably Robin. My wife is very studious, loves books, and is currently doing her PhD, so all of that just screams Robin to me. Do you watch Mr. Morge's videos? They are fantastic. I do not. I don't really watch any videos on One Piece content because after spending most of my free time making One Piece content, I usually spend what little time I have left watching something that isn't One Piece related. I have heard that Mr. Morge's videos are great though, almost universally actually, so he must be doing something very, very right. If you could change one thing about One Piece, what would it be? It could be something within the story or outside of it. It would be one of my aforementioned three biggest scribes with the series. At this stage, I'd change things so that Nami and Robin got a bit more individual combat focus. Although the cover story series was outvoted by the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia series, would you consider still making them in the future? I would love to see them. Definitely, the cover stories are just so fantastic and I think that the anime only watchers would really appreciate them because some of them have massive information that the anime just ignores entirely. Like, I mean, who doesn't want to hear about Enel's adventure on the moon? Or well, you know, the entire reveal that Bonkle is alive in Impel Down. It's just kind of madness that the anime hasn't touched on any of that. Why for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia? Do you spell the devil fruit in Japanese? Do you think your audience is Japanese? I just wanna know which devil fruit it is before I click. So I use the Japanese names for the purpose of consistency. The problem with using an English name is that the English names for the devil fruits actually change depending on what translation you're consuming. I mean, there are some cases where Viz, Funimation, and 4Kids all use entirely different names for the same fruit. So it's just easier and more straightforward to use the Japanese name. And look mate, all I'm saying is just click the video anyway, you know? You won't be disappointed, I promise. Do you have any plans on visiting the States? If so, would you ever want to meet your fans? I would love to meet my fans, but unfortunately I have no plans to visit the US anytime soon. I went there about three years ago, so my sights are mainly set on places I haven't visited yet, but it's not entirely out of the question because my wife does have family in New York. So maybe, very maybe.
Do you consider yourself having a collaboration video with other One Piece YouTubers? Have you ever been invited to collab by other One Piece YouTubers? No, I've not really ever been invited to collaborate before. The only thing I've done that comes close was recording a very, very short thing for Flying Panda's 50k subscriber special. I am open to collaboration, I guess, but at the same time, I have no idea what that collaboration would be. You know, I'm not sure what benefit there would be to have another One Piece YouTuber on my channel, or what benefit I would be on someone else's channel. But once again, still open, I suppose. Grand Line Review. You've told us that you work in theatre while running the channel, but what was your side project before Grand Line Review? Was it something that helped you develop the skills to carry this channel forward, or did you have to start acquiring those from scratch? <laughs> Alright, big question there. Basically, from late high school onwards, my spare time has been consumed with pursuing some sort of creative project. I'm not going to go into everything because there's a lot, but some of the major ones that help contribute to the channel, I guess. In high school, I used to digitally color manga, which was my introduction to Photoshop. I also made anime music videos, which is my gateway into editing software. And I've also pursued writing, photography, digital painting, web comics, and in my adult life, theater design. So the only thing I really had to acquire from scratch to start this channel was a decent presenting voice. And I'd say that took an awfully long time, and arguably, I'm still not there yet. Which One Piece villain would you be? Which one would I be? Ugh. All right, let's go with NL for the crazy lightning powers and because, you know, he has a decent physique. Do you find your voice calming and melodic? And yeah, keep going, man. Great Chanel. Thank you very much. I really don't find my voice calming and melodic though. I very much dislike listening to my own voice, which makes this whole video making process pretty awkward. Why does your voice sound like you're 40, while your face looks like you're 19? Uh, that's probably the fancy words I use, combined with the profile picture of me. See, I have a sort of baby face when I shave. Regarding the timeline in One Piece, it was said that during the end of Fishman Island, the Big Mom's Tea Party was in four days. I know Dressrosa took place in one day, but they didn't leave for Zoe until three days after beating Doflamingo, and then it took them a week to get to Zoe. Was that just a plot hole, or was the team party moved back? Right, yeah, that confused me during the Fishman Island arc review because Tamago did say that the tea party would be in four days. It must have been another tea party though, because significantly longer than that passed before the tea party we know occurred. It's just one of those weird things because Beige Capone does confirm that they happen regularly, but there was a lot of emphasis placed on that tea party, which was mentioned during Fishman Island. Look, it could have been Oda's original intention to have that be the tea party, but it just didn't work out that way, so it was a different one. Have you ever visited any other countries, and if so, which was your favourite? I have visited many countries, and I have to say that Iceland was probably my favourite. It's just such a stunning, adventurous landscape, pretty much entirely untouched by humanity. The only shame is that it's so expensive, and that the water is treated with hydrogen sulphide to make sure that their pipes don't corrode. Which basically means that your kitchen and bathroom permanently smell like crap. Do you think Zoro has a deeper backstory than what we've seen so far? I certainly hope so because he deserves more than a five page flashback. And if there's any time for it, it's definitely Wano. And final question, is this the end of the video? Yes, yes it is. And that pretty much does it for the 50k Q&A. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with, I don't know, something. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.